it looks like Hasbro is going to be taking all of my money this year. Between the X-Men 60th anniversary and the upcoming Avengers 60th anniversary, Marvel Legends are releasing all sorts of fancy deluxe sets and characters that have never been produced in the series before. And one of their first deluxe sets this year celebrating the X-Men 60th anniversary is this X-Men Villains set. Now, on the face of it, I've got to be honest, this is something of a no-brainer if you are an X-Men fan because we're getting a lot of first here. Four out of the five figures in this set are brand new characters that have never been produced in this series before. Only Strife has been produced previously and even that has had a significant update. That being said, I definitely have a few gripes with this set which we'll get into a little bit later. But let's start off by looking at the packaging. First of all, obviously this is a plastic free packaging, we can't see any of the figures inside this set, but what we do have this fantastic artwork on the front of this box and I'm not sure who the artist is but I think they've done a really nice job of bringing these characters to life and the colouring in particular is really really striking it's very bright and it's quite fun this is definitely very very displayable this is quite a sizable package as well this is quite tall obviously because it houses five figures in here and it looks pretty good I have to say it's quite impressive the side panel is surprisingly narrow and thin, but we do at least have the artwork of the individual characters' heads. These are all replicated from the front of the packaging. This isn't new artwork here, but it's still pretty attractive. You can put this on display on its side on the shelf, possibly if you have a shelf big enough, that is. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. It's nice and colourful. We see the individual characters, and of course we have the X-Men logo at the top, so I like this. The reverse of the packaging is interesting. It does show off all the figures inside the packaging, but these are digital renderings. I never really am a big fan of this, to be honest, this approach. Uh, I'd much rather have stock photos of the figures uh, because obviously there are going to be differences between the digital rendering and the actual thing. I mean, it's always just going to be an impression at the end of the day. Um, so this looks fine. It's laid out interestingly. I do like that they've made the effort to put the collage behind each figure of sort of the Marvel comics uh, in the background there which I think is a nice touch and it is quite colourful. We see lots of yellow on there which is good at contrasting nicely against the blue so I still think this looks presentable but uh, I don't know I feel like maybe they could have done something a bit more imaginative or just taken some nice stock photos. As I mentioned this packaging is completely plastic free so what we'll see inside is this card interior which we pull out we can see there are figures inside the packaging secured quite neatly and securely to be fair and they are contained within rice paper. This top element slides off because this is the main accessory for Zero. This is his ring of fire that he portal that he walks through uh, which is uh, pretty nicely done. Now I have to say I'm really sorry to see the plastic interior packaging go. I understand the reasons for it but it's much better to have your figures have a specific mould where they can fit into place and be held securely rather than this very loose fashion inside the rice paper. So let's move on to the figures themselves and we'll start off with Vertigo. Again, this represents the debut of this character in the Marvel Legends line, which is pretty exciting. Now, in terms of the sculpting, I think we can see some parts here have been reused. I don't think this is the first time we've seen this hairpiece, and obviously the body mold they've gone for with this figure has been used many, many times on their female characters. For the most part, I think they've done a pretty good job when it comes to likeness, such as it is. It's always going to be open to artistic interpretation when we're adapting a comic book character, of course. But I think this is very recognisable as a character. I think they've done a nice job with the paint, particularly around the eyes. The eyeballs themselves are very nicely painted with a strong visual blue there, and the eyelashes are very nicely done. So I think they've done a good job on the face. I'm very disappointed with the hair. It is, of course, just that matte plastic green, and it would have been really nice for them to just put a little bit of a wash through this, just to make it feel a bit more textured and a bit more real. Now, obviously, the body itself has no special sculpting here. The costume itself is just painted on. For the most part, I think they've done a really nice job recreating this design. I think it looks really, really good, especially that separation between the skin tone and the costume. Uh, I think they've very neatly uh, painted that in there, so there's no blaring that I can see, which is really, really good. And I think the pattern they've gone for is pretty much accurate to what we see in the comic book, so I have no real issues here. As I say, the only drawback is that this figure has just essentially been painted over. It is an existing body mold and sculpt, and there's nothing new about this particular figure. 
Articulation wise, there is a ball joint in the head, but it is a little bit limited. She can move her head from side to side, but that plastic hairpiece is a massive hindrance to any other movement. Yes, she can nod her head down, but you can't get it to nod up at all. Now, she's got ball joints in the shoulders, which allow the arms to lift up and out. And of course, there is a pin swivel at the elbow. Now, this is disappointing considering we've seen that there are those pinless arms out there for the female characters now. And I've never liked this joint, especially on white plastic, uh, which often feels like you're going to snap that pin pin uh, but it does hold up it does the job it bends to 90 degrees and of course there's another pin swivel at the wrist there allowing that hand to rotate all the way around and hinge forwards and backwards Another ball joint in the torso allows the upper torso to move from side to side and just about lean left and right a little bit. Not a huge range of motion here, to be honest. She can also bend forwards and backwards, but again, not a great range of motion, but enough to be able to get some sense of movement out of this character. Now, there's ball joints in the hips as well, so the legs will kick out to the side. Of course, there is a complementary thigh swivel there as well that will allow you to rotate that leg all the way around. And the legs, of course, will kick forwards, they'll kick backwards, and there is a double joint at the knee that allows the lower leg to kick all the way back there. Finally, you'll notice there is an ankle pivot that allows that foot to bend from side to side, but also hinge forwards and backwards. And in terms of accessories, she comes with a pair of closed fists. Gotta be honest, this is pretty disappointing. I would really have hoped that she would have had some sort of special effect to go on the end of those wrists that recreate her hypnotic power or something around the eyes or anything really uh, would have been very, very cool. Uh, so really disappointing that they didn't put a little bit more effort into this. And that definitely reflects the three stars that I'm going to give this figure. This is not a bad figure. This is a very welcome character to join the lineup of X-Men's Rogue Gallery. Uh, I think this is, you know, a really interesting character. I think it's a nice design. I think they've done a good job with the paint apps. It's a figure well worth having in the collection, but it doesn't do anything new. And it does feel very, very bare bones. And I really feel for a special set like this, they should have pushed the boat out a little bit more because this just feels a little bit phoned in. Okay, so let's move on to Pretty Boy. This is great to have another one of the Reavers in the collection. We're starting to build up a pretty cool collection now of these famous cyborg baddies. And to be fair, this figure definitely does represent something new. I believe this is the first time we've seen this body sculpt at all on any Marvel Legends figure. So kudos to Marvel Legends for doing this. And to its credit, this figure is completely unique. Now, I do think the head sculpt is really well done. We've definitely got their menacing uh, glare there, the sneer on the face. I think they've done a nice job of that. Again, the paint tabs are pretty good. As I always say, it would have been nice to have a bit more of a wash running through the hair, but I don't think it matters too much here. Uh, I think overall, this looks really good. The body sculpting is quite nicely done, I have to say. There's a lot of detail in here, individual rivets and grooves and lines and bits and pieces. Uh, I think this works quite nicely. There's even a little bit of colour on some of those wires. We can see a little bit of red and green in there as well, which is pretty cool. And the silver plastic they've gone for catches the light quite nicely as well, so it gives it that metallic effect, which works really well. Now, as being critical, though, I would say it'd be nice to have a bit more of a paint wash running through this figure. The sculpting is all there, and I think it could have been really enhanced with a good paint wash to make it look a bit more authentic, a bit more lived in and detailed. So it's a shame they missed the boat on that. Again, if we look at the legs, obviously this is all brand new, really uh, nice skinny legs there uh, created just for this release. So I think they've done a really good job in this area. Articulation wise, we haven't lost an awful lot. He still has a ball joint in the head. So of course that head can look up and down, move side to side. And there's a pretty decent range of motion. It's not huge. It doesn't have a peg there to help it move all the way forwards, but there's enough to allow it to nod up and down. Now we just have ball joints in the shoulders that allow his arms to lift up and out. There is a very obvious <laughs> bicep swivel at the top there that allows that upper arm to move around as well. Of course, there are double joints in the elbows allowing that hand to move all the way back to the head if you want it to. And there is a pin swivel at the wrist allowing that wrist to rotate all the way around and hinge forwards and backwards. Now, there is a straight swivel at the waist. As you can see, this can rotate all the way around pretty easily. And there does seem to be a joint in the upper torso that will allow the torso to move from side to side. But it's a little bit stiff and it doesn't 
really want to work too much. <laughs> now there are ball joints in the hips that allow these legs to really kick out to the side. Again this is a little bit stiff and clunky though and I think it's to do with the plastic they've used. There is also a bicep swivel at the very top of that joint as well. Again very resistant. Now the legs will kick forwards and backwards but as I keep saying there's a lot of resistance here and it feels a little bit strange in my grip to be honest. Like it might snap off. There's another double joint at the knees allowing that lower leg to kick all the way up and then there is an ankle pivot at the foot there allowing the foot to move from side to side and hinge forwards and backwards. In terms of extras he fares a little better than Vertigo. He does have an open pair of gripping hands and he's going to need them for his two pistols. And of course these pistols both come with effects as well. Pleasingly, both of these guns are actually different sculpts, so you're getting two individual guns here, which is quite cool. Sadly, there's no real nice paintwork on them at all. It is just a matte black plastic, but the sculpt is pretty nice. Now, the one criticism I do have, though, is that his right hand really struggles to grip this particular weapon, the one with the clip coming out the bottom of it. Uh, I cannot get this into his grip for love nor money. The left hand fares much better with the other pistol without the clip, this seems to fit quite snugly into his grip and of course he can get his finger onto the trigger there quite nicely. And of course you can swap out the various effects between the blast effect and the smoke effect. Uh, all in all, this looks pretty good and is pretty effective. But in terms of my star rating, I'm only actually going to give him two stars. Why the low score? Well, I think this is a really nice figure in principle. I really appreciate him coming up with a brand new sculpt. I think that's really cool. Again, great to have another Reaver in the collection, his first appearance in the Marvel Legends line. All good stuff. And it is also nice that they've given him a smattering of extra goodies as well in those two weapons. I think that works really nicely. But what works really against this figure is the articulation. Now, the scheme is all there, we've seen that, but the practicalities of getting him into any other position is really, really tricky. I found this plastic to be really uh, obtrusive <laughs> and very, very difficult to work with. There was always this sense that I was just, just about to tear the plastic apart or snap it off. It just didn't feel very malleable. It didn't feel like it wanted to work with me at all. And as a consequence, I really, really struggled to get this figure into any kind of meaningful pose at all. So he's pretty much stationary and stock still most of the time. Now, you might have a better look with yours, you might be more skilled at working with this kind of plastic, but for me, I found this to be a real disappointment. Next up, we have Zero, and straight away, you're going to recognise this body mold. It's been used many, many times on Marvel Legend figures across the years. And to be completely honest, there's not an awful lot to talk about when it comes to this sculpt or the paint apps. As you can see, it is just molded in that flat white plastic. There are no paint washes or paint apps running through this figure. The only thing that we have here is the blank expression head with the black circle, both on his face and on his chest. And... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, there's not an awful lot to this character. There's not much more they could have done with this design. But I still think a paint wash to accentuate some of the muscle groups and some of the shadowing here and there would have made uh, a bit of a difference. Now, I did want to point out one glaring issue I had with this figure. As you can see, the arm has bent the way it's been held in the packaging. It's warped it, and so it looks a little bit strange. And obviously, that causes implications for posing and the articulation as well. So this is really disappointing and is definitely a side effect of the plastic-free packaging approach. No real surprises with the articulation. There's a ball joint in the head that allows the head to rotate all the way around. Of course, he can look up and down and move it side to side. Now, there is this very handy peg here that allows the head to move all the way down and a really good healthy distance back as well. So this is good stuff. Now, there's a good ball joint in the shoulders as well that allows the arm to lift right the way up. Complementary bicep swivel, double joints at the elbow and a pin swivel at the wrist as well. So that wrist can rotate all the way around and, of course, hinge forwards and backwards. There's a swivel at the waist allowing the figure to move from side to side and of course there is that ab crunch there in the center of the torso that allows the figure to bend forwards and backwards and there's a pretty good range of motion here you can go all the way back there which is fantastic. Ball joints and the hips allow the legs to kick out to the side again there is that upper thigh swivel there as well to rotate the leg around 
the legs will kick forwards, they'll go back a little bit, and then there is the double joints at the knees as well, so that lower leg can kick all the way back up there, and there is a swivel at the top of the boot cut there in the middle of the lower leg, which is great. And then finally, there is another ankle pivot at the base of the foot, so of course the foot will hinge forwards and backwards, but it'll also turn from side to side. Now this is white plastic, so I do have some issues with this articulation again. But I'll come back to that in a moment. In terms of accessories, well, he comes with an extra pair of flat, open hands and this portal, uh, which is pretty nicely done. We've seen this piece before that came with the Doctor Strange figure, but this works pretty well here. Now then, standing the figure in front of the portal, this looks pretty cool. This is a nice looking figure, but I'm only going to give it three stars. This isn't a bad figure. The articulation scheme is really good. The body mold and sculpt is really good. The accessories are pretty nice, but I do have some massive gripes. First up, I really hate that the arms become warped. Now, this might well just be mine and the way it's been packaged in the box, but it's an issue, isn't it? I mean, it just looks odd. <laughs> But worst of all, the worst offender with this figure really has to come down to the articulation. Now the scheme is absolutely great, but what I have an issue with is the fact that when I try to bend these joints, it really feels like there's a lot of resistance there and it feels very tentative, like, like these joints could snap off or tear away, they don't feel solid, and this is a feeling I have with a lot of figures that are produced in this white plastic. It just feels a lot less robust and much more prone to snapping. Okay, so moving on to random. Now, I've got to be honest, for me, this was the real highlight of the set. This is the thing that really made me want to pull the trigger and buy this set in the first place. And I'm sure there's a lot of other fans out there who feel the same way. I really do like this head sculpt. I think they've done a really good job with it all in all. They've obviously reused that bandana. I think we've seen that before, I think, on the Colossus Builder figure from the Age of Apocalypse wave a few years back. Uh, but I do really like the expression on the face. It looks mean and nasty. I like the stubble they've got there. And I like the paint job they've done on the shades as well. They haven't just cast this in a matte black. They've actually bothered to paint, paint it with a sort of shiny metallic paint, which uh, really reflects the light, which is very nicely done. Now, I'm sure most of you will recognize this jacket. It did come with the Thunderstrike figure from just a couple of years ago in the Joe Fix-It wave. So this has been recycled, although repainted. And I have to say, I think they've done a better job of it this time around. We can see some nice paint apps when it comes to the zippers, the buttons, and of course the red on the shoulders. So I think this looks pretty good, actually. I have no issues with this. The body sculpt they've chosen is to go for one of those slightly oversized figures, but not as big as, say, the Hulk. But again, probably, I think, recycling a previously released Thor, although I can't confirm that at the moment. Now, I do really like what they've done with the arms. The added paint apps here of this snake tattoo I think works really, really well. This is very finely painted and it looks really good. It's very vivid in its colouring as well, and I think this really stands out. On the other shoulder, of course, we have this love heart there, there which again, another great tattoo. I think this is really neatly done. Less impressive, though, is the sort of barbed wire going around the top of his bicep there. Uh, the the moulding is absolutely fine, but it looks very plastic. Uh, and I just wish they'd you know, added a bit of a paint wash over this just to give it a bit more texture, a bit more depth, and just make it look a little bit better. His lower left arm, on the other hand, is a specially crafted, uniquely sculpted mould for this individual release. I can't believe they'll ever really reuse this unless they perhaps do a bushwhacker figure, possibly at some point in the future. Uh, but this looks absolutely fantastic. This looks like it's come straight from the comic books, and I think they've done a pretty nice job with this in terms of the sculpting of it. Again, would have been nice if they just put a little bit of a paint wash through this just to really, you know, capitalise on this fantastic sculpt. Other than that, there's nothing really new with this figure. I think we've seen all of these parts elsewhere before in different combinations. And whilst it's all absolutely fine, I just feel it all could have been improved with just a little bit of a paint wash. It just feels very matte. This is coming out in the plastic it's sculpted in, and there's no real effort to really colour some of these other parts. Like, these boots could have done with just a light paint wash running over it just to give it a little bit more texture and make it look a little bit more detailed. And it makes such a huge difference. As it is, it just feels feels a bit cheap and plastic-like. All in all for this guy, I think he's probably the real prize of the set, so I'm going to give him four stars. It's great to have this character at last in the X-Men Marvel Legends lineup. He's a really cool, larger-than-life character, very distinctive. I like that we've actually got some specially sculpted new parts for this figure. I think that is a massive plus, and I do like how they've painted in the jacket and the, the head sculpt in particular, but also those tattoos are really, really effective. The articulation is absolutely solid. But 
I just feel that this figure is just really lacking a little bit of a paint wash that would really push it over the edge and make this a five star release. Without it, again, there is this reoccurring feeling with this set that it's just, it's kind of been phoned in a little bit. Now, admittedly, they've made a bit more effort with Random, but I just feel like if they just put a wash in through the rest of his torso, through the, through his legs and his boots, then that would have made all the difference and made this a, a five star figure, I suspect. As it is, it just feels a bit recycled from other parts and without the necessary love and care that it really deserved. Okay, so finally we have Strife, and as I said before, Strife is the only member of this set that has actually had a previous release in the Marvel Legends line from Hasbro. He was released as part of the Jubilee Builder figure from many, many years ago now, and I think a lot of people were disappointed with this initial release at the time. I actually never picked it up myself, and it was one I always regretted, so having a second chance to pick him up now in this set was an absolute must for me. But as we can see, there have been some several improvements when it comes to this sculpt, most notably in the head here, and I do think they've done a really good job with this helmet. Plus, we can see some decent attempts at paint apps around the face. What we can see there in terms of the skin tone, we can see actually a fair amount of stubble, which is quite a nice detail, and this is quite nicely done all in all. So I think this works a real treat. Now, the only criticism I have here, really, is although I really like this helmet, I think they've done a good job with all these uh, different levels of plastic. Uh, it's not just one sculpt, it's actually individual pieces sort of stuck together, if that makes sense. But I just wish they'd gone the extra mile when it came to the materials they've used for this head sculpt. I think it would have been nice if they'd utilised a more reflective, more metallic looking plastic for this piece to really catch the light a lot better than it does. It feels a bit matte, really. Uh, or, alternatively, if they could just gone that extra mile and maybe use some sort of chrome paint on this figure, that would have been really, really cool. Now, the body sculpt has been reused here. This has been recycled from the previous release, although it is painted slightly differently, uh, particularly in those arms, for example. Uh, they're now silver, whereas previously they were a darker navy blue. Likewise, the blue they've used for the center of the torso and the top of the legs is, is a lot brighter now. And this has more of a metallic sheen, which works really well. Overall, I have to say, I think I prefer this version. I think this works quite nicely. It is an oversized figure as well, so he's a little bit taller than the other figures, as we'll see a little bit later and I think this works quite nicely. I'm conscious that I am repeating myself in my criticism, but once again, I've got to highlight that I think it would have been improved massively with a paint wash to draw out some of these details, or at least a lot more of a metallic paint over this figure as a whole to just catch the light a lot more if they wanted to avoid going down the textured route. I do have to spend a little bit of time talking about this cape because I've got to be honest, I hate it. Uh, it is a hard, solid, plastic cape. You can just about squeeze it, uh, but there's no give in this whatsoever. And of course, there's no paint apps and it is a hindrance to articulation. And speaking of, he has a ball joint in his head, so he can move his head from side to side, and you can see this new headpiece actually works quite nicely. It's quite a soft plastic that will bend with the figure, so I think this works quite nicely. Uh, he can't really nod it up or down. Unfortunately, it can just move from side to side. Now, he does have ball joints in the shoulders, though, and they will lift up all the way. Those shoulder pads aren't a hindrance, which is good, um, but they can't go any higher than this. Now there is a complementary bicep swivel, double joints at the elbow, and of course a pin swivel at the wrist, allowing you to rotate that all the way around and hinge it forwards and backwards as well. He does have a swivel at the waist, so of course he can move from side to side, which is great, and he's got that ab crunch there in the center of his chest, so he can move up and down. Well, certainly he can move bend forwards, um, not so much backwards in this case. It does have ball joints in the hips though, so the legs will kick out to the side. Again, we can see another complimentary thigh swivel at the top there. The legs will kick forwards and they'll go back a decent distance as well, but of course they are blocked by that cape. Now, the legs will bend back, but this is a real struggle because of the cape, so you're going to have to really persevere with this. And I'm not sure how helpful it is with this cape being in the way, but he does have a, another ankle rocker at the ankle there, so of course it will move from side to side and it will hinge forward and backwards but as you can see we have a little bit of resistance once again on this figure which is a little bit disappointing sadly in terms of accessories all he comes with is an alternate pair of hands this is a real shame because the original release at least came with a sword although to be fair it wasn't the best because it wasn't very well painted it was just that matte gold plastic but at least it was something uh, it's sad to think that we've lost that this time around 
So here he is next to the original release from Hasbro from a few years ago, so you can see the noticeable differences between the two. For the most part, it is the same figure in terms of the sculpt, but as you can see, the paint apps are very, very different, and of course that new headpiece is radically different. For a quick scale comparison, here he is standing next to some of the other figures in this set. As we can see, here he is standing next to Random. Obviously, Random is about the same size as Thor. Here he is next to Zero, who is probably equivalent to, say, Captain America. And here he is standing next to Vertigo, who, again, is probably closer to, say, the Black Widow. For me, despite being the one repurposed figure in this set, I'm going to give him four stars because overall I think this figure works pretty well. I think they've managed to improve upon the original release with this head sculpt in particular. I think this is a really nice job they've done there and if you're a purist you're probably going to want to pick this version up because it's it's just radically improved. It just looks a lot better. Now I definitely have some gripes with this figure though. Again as usual the lack of paint wash. Perhaps they could have used some different materials to create more of a shiny metallic sort of feel or vibe to this figure and then crucially most most egregious of all is that cape that really really bugs me i wish they'd swap that out and done something better there but other than that i think this is a pretty nice figure in its own right and it's a nice second chance for people who missed out on him first time around okay then so there you have it there's my review of these five figures in this 60th anniversary x-men villain set as I said at the top of the video, I think it's really, really cool that they're releasing a lot of firsts in this set. Four of these characters are brand new, have never been introduced to Marvel Legends line before, and that's going to make them very, very attractive. I also think the repurposing of Strife is actually quite welcome. I actually don't mind that they've revisited this figure at all, because he was a tricky one to get hold of first time around, and a lot of people would want to have this character in their collection once again, especially with some of those improvements. Overall though, I'm only going to give this set three stars and I have to say, I sometimes feel that with these Hasbro Deluxe Marvel Legends sets, there's a dip in quality. There's something about the joints that feel a little bit more prone to snapping, they don't feel quite as secure, they don't quite work the way I'm used to them working when they're released single carded. Uh, there's just something about them just feels a little bit phoned in, especially when we think about some of the paint apps, for example, on some of these figures, we can see how just a simple wash over some of these parts would have just really enhanced them, and I think it's really disappointing that they haven't made that effort here. Uh, and I think when we look at figures like Strife, which definitely has been improved with that head sculpt, why didn't they do something about that cape? Because that's obviously really, really bad. <laughs> I think there's a lot more they could have done, a lot of other options they could have looked at to improve that and make this a much more attractive offering. On the other hand, there are a lot of firsts about this set. There's actually some brand new tooling and sculpting going on. If we look at the pretty boy uh, body and torso, for example. Likewise, if we look at Random's gun arm, this is new stuff, which is really really cool and I think it justifies the more simplistic approach to say Vertigo or Zero. I don't mind so much but overall I don't know I just feel a little bit disappointed with this set. I have this real sense that mm, I don't know I feel like I've been a little bit short changed because this is quite an expensive set and I don't really feel like I'm getting the quality in it that I would expect for the price point. Okay, I'm conscious that I've been speaking for quite a while. Congratulations to anyone who made it this far. <laughs> Listen to me droning on. I hope it was somewhat helpful uh, and insightful in some way. Uh, as ever, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear whether you decided to go for this set or pass on it on. And just what are your thoughts generally about it? How do you feel about this set in particular? If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. And remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.